Oh, wow. So we get to see Jonathan just busting into your house. It's like a That's takeover. Right. right. Okay. And then we get to see someone knocking on my door. All right. There you go. All right, okay, so all the cats have their food and all the kids got their book bags. All right. Okay. <laughs> so the you just said cardamom. And it's so funny because that I think that's like rarely used for much of anything, right? Yeah. And so the movie that I was watching two days ago is called oh. It's Oh, there goes Jonathan. It's, yeah. um, I'm totally fine. And so these two girls, they were business partners. And in the beginning of the movie, what happens is the one of them is there at the beach house and the doorbell rings and this lady tries to deliver this party stuff, party supplies like cake and everything. And then she says, oh, I forgot to cancel. She says, but the only person that can cancel is Jennifer. And she says, Jennifer. And she says, oh, yeah, I forgot she's dead. And her best friend, I thought she was being funny, but her best friend died named Jennifer. And this lady insists on dropping off all this food and all these party supplies. And then she, once the girl accepts it because she has no choice but to accept it and she goes in the house, Jennifer is literally standing there, but Jennifer is an alien. Oh, what show is this? I'm totally fine. And she says, oh. I'm only here for two days. She, and so I'm like, so, so her friend, the girl's standing there and it's like, my friend's dead. Okay, I'm going crazy. Like one minute she's like, I'm going to roll with it. The next minute she's like, no, 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 I can't go crazy right now. And then and then finally the alien explains the whole thing. And for the first time, the alien gets to eat real food. And she says, because what happens is the girl who's the alien has all of Jennifer's memories. So now she can literally ask the alien anything. So anything that maybe Jennifer didn't tell her. She can ask the alien and the alien will tell her. Right. <laughs> so now yeah. she, she starts asking secrets and stuff. And then the alien gets to eat food. And she says, basically, she's like, I already know what it tastes like. Like, she doesn't see the point in cooking and food. And then she tastes it. She says, this is way note to self. Memories are nothing compared to the actual experience. <laughs> <laughs> And then she says, I like this cardamom soda. Oh. They made some weird flavor natural soda with cardamom flavor. So anyway, I told this long story to tell you about that soda. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> people do that. Smell Cleopatra's mm. perfume, so you can see. Ooh. Ooh. It's like a... <clears throat> it's amazing. It's like a cool wave and you're subtly dancing upon it. Yeah. Well, mm. apparently Cleopatra, this was Cleopatra's fragrance that she just intoxicated everybody with it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Huh, so look at the healing properties of cardamom. Does that look like cardamom? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. The other day, I actually mixed um, the tobacco and um, and the lotus yeah. together. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love this. I love this. Uh, mm. I think myrrh, myrrh in our yeah. in the opening the gates process. I think myrrh goes on the back of the third eye. 
Mm. In, in my yeah, process. because it, 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 it is, it, 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 it would work with the, the, myrrh and frankincense would work with the third eye. Yeah. And then or we the put heart. frankincense on the back of the throat and they call it God's mouth in my process. Yeah. <clears throat> back of the throat process working in with the along in the front with the jasmine in the front mm -hmm. so I'm starting to remember <laughs> and there's two oh. kinds of jasmine right there's an egyptian jasmine and then there's an asian jasmine and they're slightly they're they're slightly different they smell similar but they're different one is more of a night jasmine and one is is more of a flower a flowering jasmine like is jasmine the one like so they say don't leave some flower plants in your room at night, like when you sleep. Is that one of them? But or something, um, it's like very... You know I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But jasmine is also kind of intoxicating in, in one sense. And you can use jasmine, um, like jasmine tea is very, uh, it actually takes you, can help you to get into an altered state of awareness. Like drinking jasmine tea. Um, and also, um, Nostradamus, what he used to use was nutmeg. So the spice nutmeg is, can, you know, like you don't want to have too much of it because it can really become, you know, like too Stimulate. stimulating or whatever. But a little bit of nutmeg also will help with your ability to um, connect with, other layers of consciousness. Mm. Right. Hey, Carrie. <laughs> I get to see Carrie tomorrow night. At Hi, Carrie. I won't, I won't get to tell all your business, but we're hanging out. I'm going to get to see you tomorrow. But um, she probably at work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you want a reading for Terry to go ahead and do your reading, you could type. If you have a question, you could type it in my inbox, her inbox, or if you're comfortable with the question, of course, I guess you can type it in the comments if you want. So today is the spring equinox. It's the first. I'm going to use the first of the month. Wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> it's the first day of spring. And today is the new moon. Oh, it's the new moon today, too. Yep. Whoa. Okay. So today is the day. You know, if if um you're using it to farm, the new moon is when you plant seeds that are going to be above ground plants. Mm -hmm. Not if you're living in Winnipeg, because we still have snow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only right. like, it's like zero degrees here, or 30 so much degrees. Snow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Anything above ground for, you know, at least a month or more. Yeah. Anything you want to grow above ground, you're going to plant during the new moon. Anything you want to go that, like, rooted um, roots, they call them? Yeah. Below ground plants you part plant during the full moon. Right. So now it's time to plant new plants. So we want things above ground manifested in this world. So if today is the day to write those things down and plant those new seeds. Or water. Water what you already had there too. Right? Yeah. To to make that path a little bit more. Uh, guilty. No guilty, guilty, guilty. I have some things planted outside that are not being watered. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, when you said water, I was like, shut your mouth. <laughs> He's talking about boo. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. That was the plants out there, you know, saying, come on, man, we need some water here, mom. Jonathan's channeling your plants. Yep. <laughs> so that was so funny. Um, in uh, in general, so she would like to do a card spread. I guess you do a three card spread in general. Yeah. For, for, for Carrie. Carrie. Mm -hmm. For Carrie. 
Okay. She's at work with the headphones on, eating lunch on break. Oh, I love it. So where where is Carrie? What city? What town? Is she in Florida? No. Darn it! I forgot. I know it's on the. She's got a dolphin there. Oh my goodness. She gets good cards. Okay. So, Carrie, we got the wisdom of the oracle. This is um, Colette Baron Reed. And those ones, that's the, one, the deck I've been drawn to. The camera looks good. Okay. So, we have one jumper. You can actually pin, I can pin you on the screen. This is, okay. we got some nice controls, sorry. So the first card I chose was the fell out message in a bottle. So that will be number one. So we'll see what this all leads to. The next one is number four, which is higher power. Mm -hmm. And the last card we got here is not for you, number six. So as we look at, <clears throat> pardon me. So it's interesting just looking at the numbers on the cards. The first one message in a bottle is, is 15. So one in five is a six, which is about harmony. The second one is about four, is number four is stability. And then the last card is number six, which is also about harmony. So um, that's just kind of interesting to have those those uh, those numbers that are showing up. <clears throat> so um, with with regard to message in a bottle, it's about communications and signs and um, delivery of of. Um, uh, it's a spontaneous oracle delivery by the speaker, pointing the way to your highest good. So it's about uh, looking for uh, spirit is going to send you signs <clears throat> when you ask for them. So when you believe you will receive them, um, you're going to allow yourself to be fluent in the language of the symbols of the oracles and of omens. So if you're someone who asks a question, then the answers are going to come whenever you um, just look for them. And it could be a sign on the billboard when you're driving. It could be, um, you know, picking up a piece of paper or you might be walking and there just might be cards that are just on the ground with numbers or with symbols on them. So pay attention to um, what's around you because they are showing you answers to questions that you maybe um, have within you. Um, and also keep your ears open. Somebody might say something, you might hear something, you might be driving and a song will come on and it'll just like, wow, that's an answer to a question I didn't even, um, that I've been pondering. So just become aware of um, <clears throat> the messages that you uh, are going to receive. So the message in the bottle is all about being in touch with your intuition and being open and aware to what you are um, receiving. And so when we now go to number four, which is your higher power, it is talking about um, your conscious contact with the higher power. So the presence of the divine and seeing source energy in all things, committing to a partnership with spirit. So when you look at <clears throat> the message in the bottle and then you have your higher power, um, the way that I would interpret that for you is that you, um, your higher self is always trying to communicate with you. And so... Um, it's going to communicate with you in ways that you are able to um, identify. So sometimes um, when it comes to the higher power is like we're not always listening to our intuition and we're asking for something, but our higher power is going to communicate 
in ways that we're able to discern. So you might, you know, like um, seeing um, a butterfly might mean something different to you than it might mean to someone else. So it's your higher power that's communicating with you in unique ways that are open to you. So you're you're getting the messages <clears throat> And through your higher, your higher self is sending you messages. So start to be, become more aware of it and in tune with, um, with your, your connection with your higher self. And you can do this by connecting at your heart level, you know, like tapping at your heart and breathing and just opening up to communication with that aspect of yourself with your higher power and just see what comes in and become aware of your surroundings and what are you being shown and what are the messages and you can even ask questions like what is it i'm ready to hear today or see today and you know it might be talking with your senses what am i going to see today um, communicate with me, asking your higher self to communicate with you in what you're going to see. And then maybe the next day you might say, what can I hear today? And so you're going to re develop that relationship with that higher aspect of yourself and building it through the messages that you're going to receive around you. And um, <clears throat> so then when we go to the next one, which is number six, it's, um, it is called Not For You. And that's a clear knowing that something is being denied you or, reject, or rejected for your protection. So, <coughs> pardon me. So I think what happens here is that you're going to be able to see um, when you have that connection with your higher self through trusting the, the uh, relationship you build, then you're going to know what's going to be appropriate for you to do, whether it's a direction to take, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's, uh, you know, turning east or turning west. You, you know, once you start to trust that relationship you have with your higher self, then you are going to start to go around to the messages around you. So I see this in, um, in a circular motion, like as you start to trust the messages you're getting through your higher self, then your higher self is going to show you messages whether something is good for you or not good for you. So that's my way of interpreting it. I don't know, Jonathan, do you have anything you want to say? Anything else with that? No, you know, you you know, what you just unfolded is pretty, pretty well. It's just like, you know, you got the higher, it's like the real reinforcement of the higher power talking down through the message in the bottom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And, you know, and being observant of what's, what vibes with you or in those moments that may be pronounced. Yeah. And just be mindful of that. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful reading there, Tate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I hope, Carrie, that kind of gives you a, mm -hmm. a just a general idea. If you want, we can go into something more specific from that, those cards. Is there a specific question? that you have using these cards? <clears throat> and it, it, the, the fortune cookie is what jumps out at me here too, though. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's this note. So it's, there's like that one word or that one, one situation that arises or there's somebody that is, that is might be, might be needing to have that, that firm, that firm conversation, but you know, you, you need to have, you need to find our foundation to hold our truth. Right. It seems like there's a lot of people that are getting that, you know, that kind of have those situations these days because everybody's going through challenges, right? So people are releasing those emotions and, and those patterns. Yeah. <coughs> Definitely, as people are, as you begin to speak more, speak for yourself more. That's, I noticed that now, the more that I put, you know, work on my throat chakra, and I want my voice to be melodious and pleasing, right? And I want to be compassionate. I want to be, um, I want to put people at ease, but I also want my message to be heard where, I'm 
I have my turn to speak what I feel is the truth to separate maybe what people are presenting to me that isn't always for my best interests. And so I noticed like when I worked on the throat chakra affirmations, they said, do not be surprised if people are startled when they finally get to hear your vo your voice or your version or your opinions and thoughts because people are so used to you going along and getting along. Right. And they enjoy that because it's to their benefit. And it, um, one of the side effects of you speaking your truth is that people normally don't like it because now you're not going along and getting along with what their version of reality is. And so it said, don't be surprised if people move out of your way or if people are not, you know, they're not so happy or feeling so good about what you have to say about it, because now you're actually standing in your space and, yeah. and being vocal about what you really feel. Hey. I feel you. I've never done this on television. It's really cool. Yeah. How many people is that? Um, it's us plus Carrie. So this is Amber Waves. Hi. Hey, Amber. And Hi. she helps helps conscious entrepreneurs that are soul. How do you soul aligned entrepreneurs build their websites? I've been owning web designer of the stars. I mean, I've taken that. <laughs> oh, that it, web designer of the stars. <laughs> Sorry, all oh, of women of the stars. I feel like I interrupted. Sorry, but I want to no. know. No, no, you were just in time. I said oh, what man. I had to say. Divine I've been time. missing you guys so much. I miss you too. Yeah, I've been wondering. Yeah, it's been a while. Time. A sacred pause. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're on. We're into spring, so we're a brand new energy. Yes. So we moved off and we moved into new into a new place, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Up level. So Carrie said, I love this. Just saw a butterfly today. Awesome reading. Thank you, Terry and Jonathan. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Carrie. You're welcome. This is new for us. This is a new way of doing things. So that you are our initial reading. That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's actually fun. And I think um, we should talk more on Telegram. And of course, we'll probably still post this on YouTube. And today I figured out, guess what I figured out? What? <laughs> if you go ahead and start your channel on Rumble, you can link Rumble to your YouTube and it'll sync the videos right on there. Uh... Oh. It takes time, but Rumble will sync your YouTube videos. And I'm like, and I was just sitting there. I loaded like 10 videos yesterday and I said, why, why isn't anything happening? And it says, oh, you didn't create the channel yet. Did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have the login like on YouTube? As soon as you create the login, you have a channel. You just have to hit upload. But but all the videos were there. But then I was like, oh, look how much time I wasted even uploading the videos when all I had to do was sync them. <laughs> Never heard that story before, but yeah. <laughs> well, you were, right? Hey, maybe maybe it wasn't there before. Maybe it's one of those Mandela effects. <laughs> Terry saving Erica. <laughs> Terry, Terry, no. I didn't even well, because we just talked about Mandela effects yesterday because I've been going, I went to Universal last year once, this year twice. I did not know Hagrid had a new motorcycle ride. And I was like, how the frick did I miss this amazing ride? And so I was walking around the park and I met these people. I said, how long has this been here? They said, oh, it's been here for years. And I was like, get the freak out of here. I've never heard of this ride. <laughs> I walked right past it and did not see it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was there before. I know it says the ride got there in 2019, so 
but it was the best ride ever. Cool. That's all I can tell you is it goes backwards, sideways, and I was like, oh my God. And then it drops to a whole nother track into the dark. And I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. And you get to see a unicorn. So. Every day, all you got to do is go to the park. Yeah. Erica's making the sound barrier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I asked my son, I said, did you hear me scream the whole time? The people in front of me have been on the ride a bunch of times. So they kept looking back like, you're about to get fucked up. They're going to fuck you up right now. <laughs> Uh, like, oh, yeah, they were looking back at me. Oh, so, you know, are, you, are you about to work on a retreat? Are you helping with this retreat? Are you attending the retreat? I'm hosting it. It was um, yeah. Oh. I, went, I went to the land when I first moved to this area, and I went. My boyfriend's family has had um family reunions out there for years, which um I could have went with one but I didn't go. We moved out here and I went there and I'm like, this is going to be where I'm hosting a retreat. I just knew it was just, mm. it was just, I knew it. And then, um, so the first person that bought a ticket was my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. Oh, that's name is Amber. She messaged me and asked me if it was okay before, but I was like, oh my God, like, yes. <laughs> so sweet. It's beautiful. It's been but of like course, over a decade. But if her name is Amber, of course, she came on over on the same Starfleet as you, because I believe that oh, people yeah. who have the same name, oh, really? that's like a, like a spaceship, like the Tyler, the fleet of Tylers came over when my son came. <laughs> so for two years, a fleet of Tylers came on into the world. So then a fleet, because we all have, like, like you have this external shell, but people named Tyler have a lot of similar characteristics. That's like true. people named Erica, people named Amber. So if she came over on the Amber fleet, of course she's going to get along with you. Huh. I've never really met an Erica that I didn't like. Even my husband's, my ex-husband's new wife is named Erica. Huh. And you know what? I just thought I had my boyfriend from high school. Uh, we broke up and he started dating another girl named Amber because I was like feisty and trying to kick her ass back then. But <laughs> <laughs> for when it was his fault, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I was young and dumb. But uh, we've all been there. We've all been that's there. That's another um, time. Yeah. We've been there. Am, huh. I'm much like men that like Ambers. <laughs> That's funny. And I so you probably got to check through their names and maybe their name, middle name might match this name. Mm. Like middle name, first that name. Jonathan is at Terry's. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Arrived two, what, so three days ago now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm still exhausted from the flight. <laughs> Well, that's good. I've been wanting to get a hold of you guys, but. Mm -hmm. Let's tell you what's funny about Jonathan. So we're still <laughs> basically meeting at the same time of day, 12, where he would normally be one o'clock where he is. And it is 11 o'clock where he is now. But you've been still late. Like, <laughs> like, it's still, like basically your body is still the same time and actually yeah. did we oh, but did we we sprung forward right yeah. yes okay so we'll bring, bring it on the spring forward <laughs> yes because so, we're, yeah, we're only one week sure. into that I yeah. woke up and I, I looked and I saw you guys message me I'm like oh oh, <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, I might be off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yep. says, you gotta do that thing where. And I said, whatever you get here. You know, it's like if you stay up really late and you're like, should I just drive there now? It's like midnight. And you're like, I better just drive there now so I'll be on time. Like, <laughs> and sleep in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Amber, I know that I know that you uh, that you read cards, but do you want me to do a reading for you? Absolutely. I'm using, I'm using the uh, uh, today. I'm using the wisdom of the oracle by Colette Baron Reed. So, if you have a question, I'll do a three card, a three card read for you. Um. 
Open in the questions don't work. Um, what do okay. I need to hear today? So just okay. That, well, that's always that's always a great question. Is sometimes yeah. we don't know what kind of question we want, but it's what do what does my higher self want me to know today? Yeah, so I'm like okay. high five right now. So I'm like, I love everything. I have everything <laughs> I need. So <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take three cards. So the first card is breathe, number twenty nine. The next card is. Between Worlds, number three. <laughs> and the next card is number 17, The Fates. So that's kind of interesting. So um, with with these, I always like to look at the numbers. So the first one is, is 29, which is 11, or, right? Yeah. And the next card is three, which is about change. And the next card is number 17, the fates. So it's interesting the numbers that are that are showing up with the with the spread. So with regard to uh, breathe, well, <clears throat> we all know what breathe means. And sometimes we forget about breathing, breathing. We have to um, creation happens with um, we take in a breath when we hold the breath that's where we put the intention to what we want to create and then with the out breath we're pushing it out we're sending it out so a lot of times people are breathing in and out but they're not really stopping at that space between the breaths because that's where the magic is created between breaths and so when we breathe consciously we stop at that middle point and that's where we can put our intention to what we want to create. So sometimes we are just too busy with life to stop. But when we can stop and breathe, we take the time to think about what we want to create in our life. <clears throat> so um, the meaning here in the card is just patience, waiting, going slowly, and our wellness, meditation, and trust. So when we breathe intentionally, then we can trust that what we are going to create with our out breath is going to be for our highest good, if that's what your intention is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just take the time to just stop and breathe with the intention. And um, so then the next card is, is number three, is between worlds. And that's exactly what happens between the breaths. We go in between, we go in between that, that between worlds with that out, with that holding that breath. We're going from being here now, breathing in. And as we hold, we're between the next space. And then our out breath is taking us to that next moment. So the place between worlds is that place where we hold with our breath. And, and that's where the intention comes from. And so, um, you know, the meaning here, what she says in the card is transitions, not being quite out of the situation and fully engaged in another. Temporary blindness, no man's land. So you can look at it in that place if you're not, if you're not sure you're between worlds, but that's where you also set your intention is between those places. And then 17 is, the fate, and so that's fate and karma, acceptance that there are things you cannot change and knowing what things, what those things are. So as you are breathing with your intention, then you're just leaving it to, you know, to whatever's going to be. So it's this or something better. So when you put your intention out into that new space, you're also trusting that, your higher self, that the faith, that karma is going to bring that what you need into that those next moments ahead of, ahead of you. So as you look through this, it's becoming aware of your ability to create by your breath, by walking between worlds, and then just allowing the fates to bring you what it is that you need. 
Wow. I'm just starting to actually really embody that. Like I've known that for a long time, but in, I feel like I've really embodied that recently. Like you just need to ask and the yeah. universe provides. And like, I really had to test myself um, that in this past couple of weeks, like I had to just be, and I learned that's when all the magic happens. So it's like kind of like that in between space that you were just talking about too. But also like, I've always wondered that about the breath. If that's yeah. like a pause when you're, mm -hmm. you know, holding the breath, like, I don't we, know. And, and, and we don't, we've lost, I shouldn't say we've lost, but a, a lot of, of, a lot of us have sort of forgotten that that's that magic place. We just become automatic, right? And we become shallow breathers. We, we, you know, we don't take that breath deep into our lungs. We just breathe at the top. And so when you're breathing, you're, <sighs> but if you stop and take a deep breath in and hold it and then, let it let it formulate and then breathe out with that intention you're bringing it in holding and sending it out and then you're you're that's where that magic takes form is in that that space of being held and then when you release it you're releasing it to you know like this is my intention and so then you let the faith take take you know like we don't always know exactly how it's going to appear for us but you're trusting when you're putting your out breath that this is what's going to that this is something that is going to occur and you know and sometimes we we have the intention of it um in one way <clears throat> but we don't know that that's necessarily the, a lot of times our intention is coming from what our ego wants. But when we let go of the ego part of it and just allow the face to take over, it's going, they're going to bring us what we need. Yeah. Yeah. Surrender. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Jonathan, do you have anything you want to, else you want to say? Yeah. And you know, on those, on the pauses, it's really to, that's, that is the surrender you know, of that what you what you're creating and to just open to observe and and your immediate surroundings or your immediate situation or just be open to what is fated to necessarily to assist you to evolve to to gather that answer for that that situation or any situations. Uh, or nourishment of your body to really deeply relax, to really settle, to to releasing, or yeah, to releasing um, any sort of diseases and, and situations, cleansing, right? Breathing in that bioenergy to cycle that that vitality within your yourself, and and just observe and really, um, you know, you bridge with your your pulse and your heartbeat and that pause. That is that is like being in the womb of the mother again. Oh, right? Interesting. So you're in the womb and you're just creating that universal state of being. Yeah. So it's really overlooked of how much how how you know you know important breath is, right? So yeah, right? You know. too much, I'm, so much. I'm I'm late to the party probably on this, and so forgive me if I if I duplicate anything that you said, but um. I was um, in the cl in class the other day, but even outside of that, like um, it was said, we're all breathing the same air like that. So if I breathe in and I breathe out this air, like eventually my air is still going to reach you. You know what I mean? Like we're still connected through this air. That, I mean, water, right? was just water too. But this thing where th there's, it makes me think about also this net over the planet with negative energies, but then there's this net over the planet with positive energies that connect us through the air, literally through the air. So how much more what I'm breathing out with my intentions or what you're in affects what you're breathing in. And so with source, like when you think, the way they describe it is God breathing breath into man, you know, that whenever we are stressed out, overwhelmed, 
and need to get back connected to source. I, w- I was wondering why do these breasts make such a big deal? Why is, does it make such a difference? And it's like, this is like the quickest way to get connected back to source is to take those deep breaths and you go, you know, and, and take the mindfulness like, oh, dad is here. <laughs> I can calm down now. It's a, re- it's a, re- it's a quick reset. Yeah. Because I wonder, like, why when I take the deep breaths, I can sleep, I can think, I can relax. I mean, I'll throw in a hug for myself to, like, calm myself down. You are safe. You are nurtured. But the biggest feeling comes from taking that deep breath in. And then now I'm also remembering because of this thought the other day, oh, I'm connected to all. All is connected to me with its breath and it it was just illuminating in how how that works and breath is the you know and so here in Jonathan you just got through talking about creation and it's like so when I do want to create the same way I was created I'm going to take a deep breath and then create the way that I was created with a deep breath mm-hmm. So, and, and just going a step further, when it comes to breath, comes to breath. we, um, you know, in, in other societies, people were breathitarians. Like before we had the fall, we didn't, we didn't need, we were nurtured by our fire right through, through the source of the, the elements. We were nurtured through that, but our frequencies have lowered, so we need to get that nourishment through the foods that we eat, through whether we're we're vegetarian, whether we're omnivores, whatever we are, we're we're receiving the life force through those beings that are giving are giving it for us for our nurturance. But at some point, we will become breathitarians again in our evolution. But um, it's the breath that gives us that that is the sustenance. So. Um, when we breathe, the more we breathe, then we are opening ourselves up to the sustenance of, of the creator. Interesting. So aligned. Amy, you're doing a retreat and you're going to do a lot of breathing. <laughs> so many people have been interested in it around here. Like, it's just, it needed to happen. Like people are like ready to do it. Um, yeah. And I realized, I, I think I want to, I'm going to do like, I'm really facilitating it. I didn't dedicate. You've frozen. I don't know it's frozen on you. Hello? It froze, it froze on her. It's frozen. Now. <laughs> Oh no, it wasn't frozen. It felt like somebody burnt me. You ever like ran into the end of an incense? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, that thing, no, the feeling on my back was like something burnt me. It was like, it was, and I was like, <laughs> what in the world? And your face was classic. Oh my god! <laughs> I was frozen like that for a second. <laughs> Is something biting me? Yeah. Mm, let me rub up on this stone. Mm. Interesting. Erica wasn't frozen, was she? No. No. Abby was the only one yeah. that was frozen for oh, us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's weird. Yeah. Interesting. Nothing new here. I mean, yeah. talking to Terry and <laughs> what happened with the, the tech. The the anomalies. Yeah, yeah. the anomalies yeah. online. Mm-hmm. Just more proof. Yeah. More proof. Well, I was flying down, and um, I uh, we were trying to book to confirm the actual tickets. You know, how you confirm for your tickets to go to set to pick your seats and everything like that. For some reason, the system wasn't taking the credit cards. Um, and then the next day, when I went to go you know, scan my barcode, my ticket to security to go through. It the 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 app the website just put me back to the, the previous page. And then when I went to go load it, it it wouldn't load. It I tried loading it fifteen times. I restarted my phone and it still didn't didn't load. So I had to walk all the way to the back to back to the baggage to get a ticket. <laughs> 
it, it, it was so crazy. Right. I'm cursing on here. Well, you you have twice. <laughs> Jonathan has extraordinary luck. Challenge. <laughs> there you go. Something. I didn't want to. I didn't know what word to use. I just never seen it like this before. Living That's in the world so trying to take him down, but he's rising up. So <laughs> get out of here, cons. <laughs> I know these dragons. Mm. Must got some powerful dragons behind you. I met a dragon lady that's friends with you guys or know you guys. Um, I found her on Facebook. She's like friends with, with um, I think you and jo Terry and Jonathan. But I was like, oh, she's I, I going live really right now. I think Allison, right? I don't remember, but I just haven't ran into too many dragon ladies, so I definitely remembered her. Araya. <laughs> Araya? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a few. But yeah, yeah. Like, ooh, another yeah. dragon lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it like this lady? Oh, I don't know. I think so. That looks familiar. See, free yeah. shout out for Araya there. <laughs> yeah. The dragon lady. The mm -hmm. dragon lady, yes. And then we had um we had the conversation with um it was like three weeks ago. And she, she came, joined us twice. What's her, um, I can't, I'm, I'm bad with names. Remember she came the first time we were gonna go live and then she wasn't ready. And then she ended up coming back the second time and we did the meditation for the full moon, I believe. Lisa? Oh my God. Do you remember it, Erica? I don't remember. Uh -uh, the full moon. And she was she had like she was a she did a shamanic practitioner, she had the color therapy, she had um, Oh okay, yeah, it's Lisa. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. We had me for a moment. Okay. Were we was that real life? Did we really do that? <laughs> Not my timeline. Not my timeline. <laughs> okay. I have a question on that's kind of extending on that reading. So do you feel I pulled a card for my friend, but it just came through as like, it's a collective energy and it was the Phoenix rising. And, um, you, do you feel like as a collective, um, from your perspective that like we're going through a rebirth kind of cycle, um, or we just got out of it maybe, or getting out of it now with the new moon, but. Well, but actually I believe that we're just going through that whole rebirth because I think Pluto left like there was there was a, a movement in the whole um astrological charts i'm not i'm not an astrologer but just reading that and we are new moons and we're beginning a, a new season yeah so so i believe that it is that rebirth right and, and spring is normally that time of rebirth and and growing so as a phoenix right when the phoenix Burns, so yeah. what does it do? It starts to grow again. So, um, so yeah, I think it, I think it's really important to to realize that we are in that stage of regrowth and just you know setting the new intention. So, so going back to your reading the, about breath, I, you know, it's about you, but it but we're, it's it's a collective. You know, when we're doing these general readings, what do I need to know? I believe that they are about all of us being able to, you know, like you can take it personally and, and that. But I think all of us can read that and say, yeah, we all need to be, become more aware of our breath and our and and, you know, even, you know, like with Carrie's reading before that is is about that message. You know, what are those messages? Are we listening to our higher self? And as we listen to our higher self, then we can move into that. Like, what is it that I'm going to create in this new energy? You know, as the energy is shifting, what am I going to create into my life? And as a collective, how are we going to move forward? A lot of processing of the collective these days. So yeah. I mean, there's so yeah. much yeah. that goes on, so it's very heavy. I, so when you were our inspiration. Sorry, are, Jonathan. You speak so low sometimes. I just <laughs> I just can't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. 
It's okay. I was just when saying that reading, there would be a lot more fire for the for the collective and new and people that are really starting to raise their vibration is going to be very prominent for them, and they're going to feel it. I, and I, I think I too, like as we awaken, we have the responsibility of those that are still like we sort of we're we're carrying them along. Like you guys come along so we, we we ground that energy for more people and so what when we do this we're doing it for not only ourselves but for the collective in a whole yeah i'm starting to i'm starting to realize that more and more that i need to um just uh, just another up level really um with all the energy work that i was receiving um, a month ago, Ooh. just a lot of up leveling and processing and stepping into my true purpose here. And I realize I'm, I, I gotta be myself and reflect on to other people. I used to overthink my mission, like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing like a certain task here on earth, you know, and I Very finally well. got out of that. <laughs> Virgo mindset, probably. Yep, hundred yep. percent. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm here to guide others, and I need to just show up as myself and be myself and show up. And yeah, so. And and sometimes it's like it's taking that breath in is like, what do I need to do next? And then just allowing it, allowing the 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 fates to show you allowing your higher self to show you what is what is it i next need to do next not not you know a day from now but what is my next step in the next two minutes or next five minutes or what do i need to say and then just allow allow it even when you're talking just allow the information to flow in and instead of coming from that left brain from the ego just opening up to allowing the words to come out but you need to say. that's exactly what happened like i was getting into the schedule and the to-do list a little of getting back into that hole or whatever so luckily i was able to come out of it and you know i was like um i need to start making money so like you better show me what's going on universe and then retreat sales and then i just got a new class truly like the most soul aligned client ever um we started today and it's just i'm like okay i believe you now <laughs> <laughs> oh i can't hear you erica you cut out. no i'm in my head i'm just oh. like wow wow <laughs> wow I just poured water all down my shirt. And <laughs> 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 sometimes, sometimes our higher self likes to play little tricks on us too. Yeah, extra hydration. <laughs> Say hello, Instagram. <laughs> Hi, Instagram. <laughs> Whoa, IG. Uh huh. I know uh, you, you. It's interesting because, like, for yourself, I know you work on web design, and then you have clients also trying to. You're trying to have a site. You're trying to have a business. You're trying to show people, like, "Hey, come look, come look." And it's like, how do you do all of these things at once? Because you be because it's almost like being a producer. <laughs> yeah, you become friends with Amber. Yeah, and that's exactly. I'm like, Lord, send this check so I can just pay Amber to do everything, Lord. Just <laughs> one day, I, one day. Yeah, yeah. By it, that point, it, it won't probably won't even be me doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I yeah, I've really like thought about that because you know I went through that reeky world. I had to get through the Reiki world and I'm just so thankful that I have friends, um, you know, Terry, that you kind of gave me that preliminary discussion um, that I needed to hear and to stay in my mind because it's so easy to get into it. And they're like, everybody, that's what they know energy healing around here. Not everyone, not 
going to assume, but it's all like Reiki because that's how they understand it. And I understand that that's, a, that's how they understand it. That's how they use the tool. And I'm starting to figure out my own kind of way of doing things. So I'm like, yeah, I'm also trying to figure out like when to start offering it and like <laughs> I'm still a web designer. I still love doing that. So yeah, it's been, um, a lot of processing. That's what I've been trying to process the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah just, just breathe it in and breathe just in. on your out breath, whatever is the way, you know, like you will be shown the way. Just trust that it's going to, it's going to manifest in the way that's best for you. The presentation of the somebody, that divine timing, that divine moment would be like, okay, this person actually came out asking for for that connection to have that a with my yoga trapeze um i taught my first yoga trapeze student on last tuesday and i probably would have waited another six months or something to teach i've been certified for over a year like it's about time and if she wouldn't ask me it was one of the reiki masters that attuned me um we just like connected and um yeah, and so I I also was it was very important that I meet people in the local area because it's just kind of been a lonely journey out here. Um like like my like people I actually want to like befriend. <laughs> but, yeah. And I got to meet so many people and um it's just growing now like at a fast rate. So it's just beautiful. Like and I had to surrender and I just, I had to tell my higher self, show me, show me. I didn't even know what that meant when I was saying it. Um, but yeah. That's perfect. A lot of people suffer from the paralysis of analysis. Mm -hmm. And so we spend so much time in our mind thinking and mm -hmm. wanting things to be perfect. And I got to make sure I got a sign first and I got to make sure I have that first. And it's like, you know, these are all the things that hold us hold us back when what you you really just do yourself even better a service to just go ahead and practice it. Even if it's like, I'm going to take on somebody pro bono or for free just so I can get to doing it to get the confidence of doing it or at a discount and then really throw myself in there. And I think a lot of people, I think people do leave themselves as a, at a disadvantage when they, when they don't do that too. Like, it's okay to offer somebody something for free or at a discount, especially when you're getting started. So you can get feedback in exchange. And then now that I got testimonials, I can say, oh, this is what I did. And I have the proof is in the pudding. I'm good. I'm good at what I do. And so, but even outside of that, just number one, get started any way you can. Just get started, even if it's at a discount or, you know, whatever. Even, you know, practice on a family member or something like that. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I did one on my mom. Oh, so let me share that, that experience. So my mom works at this nursing home and just a lot of negative energy that she's around all day. And um, I can just tell just by the way she's talking to her, I'm like, you're fucking driving me nuts because of the way you talk to yourself. Like, like, quit talking to yourself like that. <laughs> I realize that's my Aries, like, fire. I need to calm it down and not approach it like that and not yell at her for <laughs> being herself. <laughs> but um, I did a Reiki session on her. Her energy healing wasn't really Reiki. Whatever. All the same. Um, and I used uh, crystals for each of her chakras, and I found that kind of like a really good way to do the distance sessions, which is pretty cool. And I feel like you may have influenced that a lot, Terry, with your crystal guidance. So I don't know, just got to give you credit for that. But oh, thank um, you. <laughs> but uh, I gave her the Reiki session. It was probably like a good hour, which was cool. She lost time. She like experienced like what it means to like be in no time. Um and then the next day, she's like, oh, well, I've been listening to these monks, these Buddhist monks. And, like, they're just saying it's all about your reaction or your response. And I'm like, yes. 
She so got I it. Really, it wasn't even in the moment. It was like after I got off the phone, I was like, that's a fucking energy healing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing the f bombs. I'm sorry. I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's um, but yeah, it's, just like, it's all subtle things, and if you don't pay attention to it, you're never gonna find it or see it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And and that's when we notice it. It's it's afterwards. Like mm-hmm. oh oh it it you know we see the blossom. Not as it's unfolding, it's we see it after it's opened. It's like, oh, there was a process to get it to open. And that is like entrepreneurship. Nobody shares like all those struggles and like, you know, I've been online for five years, but it wasn't too that I'm like doing it effectively. (laughs) I used to be in analysis paralysis all the time, you know, like just wasting so much time on stupid things. Mm-hmm. And like, mo- that's why most people give up. And that's why I got to give it to the entrepreneurs that like, stay, just stick it out, you know, and it really, it's about enjoying the journey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which it really is a, a shift, a really big shift for some people, I feel like. So but I, I really, that's why I really like Steve Covey, because Steve Covey talks about the quadrants of what is important and what is urgent. And so there's things that are important, but they're not urgent. There's things that are important that are urgent. And then there's things that are not important, not urgent, or they're urgent. Um, Mm -hmm. For me, I have to stay away from 911 people. That's what I call them. People who are always in the emergency quadrant but it's something that's not important to me. So they're calling me with something that's not important to me, but it's extremely urgent for them. And it's like, oh my God, save me. My house is on fire. It's usually it's something that they could have planned for. It's something that they could have taken care of that they had time, but they've waited until it was too late. And they usually come and interrupt your day with it. Here you are trying to finish the tasks that are on your table. And so one thing that you could do with people when they're like this is, well, I can do this for you, but you have to do this for me. And you have to give them some type of exchange. If they don't stick around, then so be it. Your stuff isn't that important. But I've learned not, not to, to stop putting out other people's fires. But then there's also this thing where we have all these tasks to do. Like if I have a paper to write or a web description I need to finish, me cutting the grass is not going to help the the website get built, right? <laughs> so sometimes we're busy, but we're busy doing something that doesn't help you finish the job that you're working on. And so me doing dishes, I might have to let that slide or balance the activities. But I noticed the things that are sitting in me the most sitting there. On, yeah. Delegating awesome. because a lot of people are busy, but they're busy doing the wrong stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting what you were saying about the emergency people, though. Is that there are those people? Just by that word. <laughs> but, but everything is an emergency for them. It's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, they're, 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 it's everything, and so you know, like you get to a point when you see these people, it's like, oh, they've got another emergency. But then when they have a true emergency, we have a tendency to pull ourselves back because it's like, yeah, they're always, you know, like it's always something with them. It's always something. But when it is a true emergency, we we don't want to ignore them, but we don't recognize it because they have a pattern. Yeah, pattern, yeah. And so it becomes it becomes challenging with some people who are always in that emergency state. We don't know when it is a true emergency or is it like, uh, is it, oh, they're off at it mm-hmm. again, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you have to just hand them a pail of water or a pail mm-hmm. for them to put out that fire, right? You know, take a breath. Okay, we're, you're here now. Mm-hmm. What's that little first step that you need to do? You, who do you need to call yeah. What do you have to say? Yeah. And then 
then you take that step back, that step back and step back and, you know, don't give that, that power or that energy to them, like you guys were saying, but you know, yeah, it's, you want to not, cause if it's really a nine one one, you want to, you know, you want to be in that, hold that space for them. But at the same time, that first 30 seconds is the key. It's like, okay, where's my out? Where do I unlock? You know? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no to that. Yeah. It really, really depends on the category because because we're empathetic, healing, loving, sweet people, we think that we need to do that for people. And some of those people need to go do it for themselves. Yeah. And I don't have to, cause we, cause we get this thing where we feel like we need to help because we can, but do we really need to? And so here it is, we got to start judging for ourselves. Like people have to learn lessons and people have to learn. So I don't necessarily when someone needs money, God knows. And I'm a person who really breaks down because no, I'm just saying like in my kids, like I've had people that I'm like, I would sometimes I'd rather give people money and Terry knows it just so you will shut up and get out of my face because I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like please whatever the story is like I have people that tell you these long stories you like I, I'd rather pay you to shut up mm. in some cases but sometimes I have to reach down inside me and learn to say even that no or there's just some cases, you know, like maybe you use your intuition, you know, that's when the right. intuition. I, but I think in. John is probably thinking more like if somebody has a portal opened up in their house and it's like, you need to do your Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> you, you're a Ghostbusters yeah. And you got to understand, it's like, you, give, you, 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 you give them three strikes. <laughs> You give yeah. them three strikes. If they're, you know what I mean? I'm not saying everybody. Yeah, like, you're talking about something different, different probably. <laughs> taking, you know, they're always trying to get at you, get at you, get at your energy, especially, you know, we're, we're, they're, we're here to trigger them so they can then heal from that, right? Observe their triggers and ground that, those triggers, right? And that's their patterns and the karmic lessons that they need to learn how to ground. So it is really trying to, hold that subtle space if it's, you know, two times or three times, but not to exactly overly allow them to avalanche and tsunami us, right? But, and if it's, you know, fourth time, fifth time, and this is their pattern over that, you know, the common pattern of the week, yeah, then, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe and your your tribe attracts your vibe. No matter if they're trying to project or become somewhat vampires in those states, right? So, Hmm. I mean... Yeah. So it's not a it's not really black and white, but it's it's really, you know, yeah. really honoring your, your moment and your mind, body, spirit, you know, when you're engaging people. And especially if it's family too, because family is the challenging part because there's liberties that are brought and it's like, okay, it's, I'm gonna say a lot more things to my mom than I would to someone else. <laughs> mm. And but sometimes like sometimes that. you might not. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point though, Jonathan, because I felt like from something my mom said, like, like at some point I was putting too much pressure and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't be perfect like you. And I'm like, I don't want you to be perfect. I just want you to take care of yourself. I was overstepping probably, you know. So that's when you have like the little toddler though, and the the toddler is walking and he fell down. Like I want him to walk, but, and I want him to win the Olympics, but today, they just fall, walking and falling and crawling. And so I tell people like, are you gonna just take the baby and throw him outside? This stupid baby, <laughs> you know? Screw you, you stupid baby. You haven't figured out how to walk in your life. <laughs> you walked yesterday, how come you can't walk today? <laughs> or you just look at the baby and you're like, oh my God. And then sometimes you just can't watch, you know, sometimes you look and you're like, oh, no, he's going to fall. I can't look because it, mm-hmm. and I can't look. But then looking at it with the God goggles on with God's eyes on and be like, God would say, oh, man, that's a great baby. That's my baby. Because if that's my baby, like my, my son, is, you know, trust, 
boy, like, cause you're, cause in a way you're looking at it in a light where you're reversing cause you're looking at your mom, like she's more like your, your daughter now. So then imagine how she looked at you when you stumbled. Like, I know Amber about to go out with this boy. I know I don't like this boy, but she, you know, I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> I'm going to let Amber fuck it up. Literally like how, how my mom actually had uh, treated a lot of relationships throughout my life. So, yeah. that's <laughs> so now it's your turn to be like, I can give it to you. You know, when you ask me for this advice, I can give it to you. And then the rest of it is you're on your own. And when you fuck it up, come back and we can laugh about it. Because I think a lot of people act as if like this one thing that's happening is like the end. And it's like, well, it's, it's still every time. It's just the beginning. It's still just the beginning. It's just the beginning. She's, every day she's starting over with a new, a new a choice ahead of her to make a new decision. It's just the beginning. And I, I think it's for a lot of us, it's this thing where people are feeling like the end is near and you want to put the sign out. The end is near. And, and, it's, and it's not. Calm down, everybody. The end is not near. The end is only the signal for a new beginning. And so we got time and you can breathe. And sometimes you're going to do stuff. Jonathan does stuff all the time. And I just be like, ah. Okay. <laughs> we can think about our friendships where it's like you have this opinion I have this opinion it's not the end move on past it and so that 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 it doesn't have to it's not literally down to the wire on everything that we see that we can just look at people through God's eyes you know, with compassion. And someone was saying this the other day about relationships too, because I think a lot of people like in their relationships, like people are like, I'm up. Now you're up. There's the person oh that's gosh, up, yeah. they look at the other person and they're like, really like, I can't believe it. They're not ascending fast enough or they're not changing fast enough. And it's like, okay, don't get too excited because this person can still pass you. But if I love you, and, and if I can watch you stumble and watch you grow, like th isn't this what the measure of true love is really supposed to be about? It's not I love you when you're perfect. It's like I love you because you are you, right? And I love to watch you grow and I love to watch you change because this is the only way we're going to have a lasting relationship where we can watch each other grow and change together because we're not always going to flow in the same space at the same time. Jonathan's friends, not that we're dating y'all. I'm just throwing this out there. Jonathan has friends and Terry has friends, but I'm not friends with all their friends. Right. And they're not friends with all my friends. And I like some people that they don't like and they like some people that I don't like. And it's like just this thing where we just have to be so much more flexible with each other. Yeah. But I think people are like, it's down to the wire. Ascension is here. We're going to the 5D. <laughs> and you never know, you might like those people eventually, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the people that you're people. no longer friends with right now, like today, I might yeah. put you on the list and put your name in the fire and be like, God, move these people out of my life. And then five years from now, I won't even remember this. And this is something I know about myself. There's people I've deleted and they're like, I don't we were friends and you deleted me. I was like, I have no idea why. Because time has allowed me to move into a different space where I'm able to accept this person again. So I, 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 there's no death sentence to this because today we're not yeah. at that point. I go through a roller coaster of emotions with a, one in particular and then another because, you know, they, they give me patience for, you know, because I'm not the same friend as when we first became acquainted, but neither are they, you know, but it's a couple friends that just, I know they're really close to maybe an awakening journey, but they're just still stuck in the 3D. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I just don't know how to approach it. Like, I don't know. Why like, just call, do, I just invest, hold the for them. do I invest this for long term or do I just expect you to support me or like, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting dealing with relationships when they're still attached to the 3d, but they're still kind of in the middle, you know? So here is your life and you're looking through the windshields. You're not looking through the rear view mirror. 
what are you doing? You're doing a retreat. You're doing your website. You're meeting new people. And through the course of the day, you're kind of making a decision on a daily basis of where you want to go. Eventually, either that person is going to want to do some of those things that you're doing or they're going to be like, nah, and, and you're going to be like way down the street somewhere and they're going to still be at this park hanging out. That's what I feel like. <laughs> and, and that's it. Are we? What do we do? I guess it's, you know, we put this pressure on us like we have to make a big decision about the people. Yeah. And it's like, do we? No. What if I just wake up today and do all the things that I really want to do? And if, if you come with me, hey, just don't funky up my space. Don't That's come in my face and funky it up. Yeah. Know, or my flow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to send you back to your mama house. Don't come over <laughs> here with the funky. Because I'm going to have to kick you out. What, yeah. Mama, don't, we don't, you know, we, we, notice it, we notice this within our family, right? Our mm -hmm. family relationships are quite often like, this is who I am now. That's who I was. And I've changed, right? So, I, you know, I'm not going to try and hold on to who I was when, you know, that you're attached to from, you know, two years ago or five years ago. And so, you know, like we can still love them, but we go on, uh, uh, we move forward as we need to move forward. And if they want to stay stuck in that pattern, um, you know, you're not holding me to that pattern. I'm just going the way I, I am. And so I can still love you. I can still relate to you to a certain way, but this is who I am now. Yeah. I think I've had to learn a lot of patience in that realm, you know, especially in the past couple years. And yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's just part of navigating life on earth too. Yeah. <laughs> but and really paying attention to our vibration and what vibes with our hearts and what we need and want to do that really inspires us. And as exactly like you, like Eric was saying, as we move and progress forward and, and ascend down the street, they, those, those vibrations, they're not going to be there in those, that vibration. So it's just naturally mm -hmm. gaining distance. Um, and you may have something that you may, like I have, uh, like there's a couple of my groomsmen that I had in my wedding, you know, eight, nine years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm going to be in her we wedding. That's so weird that you friends. said that. Because yeah. I'm going to be best friends. We were best friends. And, and it's like, well, and the space now is like, okay, we really can vibe with food and, 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 and things like that. And even that is starting to stretch out because they're still really about the, that full on, uh, you know, not so healthy food, which is you know, moving in the opposite direction of that. So it's just, but again, holding the space and having conversation about travels and stuff. And, you know, it's just allowing it to naturally ebb and flow with it, you know? Yeah. I, I had another friend who was talking about, uh, I guess the, the change was there they felt the change was there and the, and the separation and moving on, but was to the point where they were like, I'm going to be your friend regardless. And I'm, and they're like, really, like, really, like, I'm going to be your friend. And, it, and then until so finally a point came where it had to become a disruptive break because you weren't allowing the thing to drift like it was going to. And you were like, no, trying to hold on to the, she was trying to hold on to the person until the person had an outburst. And it was like, basically, get away from me. Leave me alone. I'm angry with you. Uh, and I said, because if you allow the break to happen, there's somewhere, someone, some things that she needs to go do. And you don't have what she needs right now. And she doesn't have what you need right now. It doesn't mean that next year that you guys aren't going to be friends. Allow, allow the breakups to happen. We don't own people. And I think we like, that's my mother, my brother, that's my sister, and that, that's my friend. And it's like, you know, we learn to say this is my, and it's like, no, actually they belong to themselves. They don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. When you're in a relationship and it comes to an end, let, let people go. You know, I hate to hear those songs where people are like, I can't breathe without you. And I'm like, you better start freaking breathing because I got to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm out. Like, like, let people go. Even with your own mother, you're saying this is my mother. It's like, 
yeah, that was just a mothership that you passed through. And it would be nice if you guys get to keep that relationship, but it's not necessarily that it has to be that way. It's just our expectations of what it's supposed to be. Uh, I had another friend when I did a session with her the other day and yeah, it hurts sometimes when your mother, you know, when you have this abrasive relationship, but also understand that the two of you signed a contract and that was your boot camp training ground. She did her job. So her higher self uh, made this agreement. Your higher self made this agreement. And the, I said, imagine if your mom was any different. Would you be as strong and outgoing and as much of a missionary as you are if she had coddled you and loved you and kept you at home? She did her job. She earned her rank as captain and she kicked you off the ship and she <laughs> sent you out into the world to do like these amazing, beautiful things. Now we can honor her for being so awesome because it to, to take a contract like this where I have to be in the world and my own child doesn't like me. That's a very hard job, but someone took it so that you could be this strong, beautiful person that you are right now. So it's these ways of seeing things and letting people be like, I can't, I can't go back and change her. <laughs> she, she's going to have to do that for herself if that's her destiny to do so, because maybe I'm not supposed to change her and maybe she's not ever supposed to change, but I can still love you from farther away than normal. Then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, the old that old school family, like even your like your cousins and your uncles, and and you know I was I'm living down in Nova Scotia, and, uh, and it seems like only time that the family really got they gather is you know at weddings or funerals. Mm. But I, I was an observer of, of, of years, and they were saying, "Oh, because your family, you should you need to be there. You know, you you're supposed to do this, and you're." Because your family, you're supposed to, you're supposed to hold that space, and so they really, um, they create that like it's like your cousins are like your brother, so they really pull you in and kind of like try to you know, almost bully you into that corner and that space that you're supposed to be, you're supposed to do that, All right? So it was, it was very interesting because it was, you know. Um, there's one brother that was doing one thing and, uh, he was doing everything for his parents. And, um, he then was starting to take, take, um, heat from his other siblings because he was doing so much. And then the cousins come in. It was just so, it was so wild to see the, like the family bullying at so many levels and how they tried to hold that equality of, of distance. Cause I'm talking like cousins are like third cousins of, they're like, oh yeah, we're just cousins. Okay, yes, but then they, it's just like they put so much of that that, that focus on uh, just because you're family, you're supposed to be this and support this and and hold that. And it must be really scary though, oh. because if you if you think about it, well, what the scary is for that person because that's the fear of loss, right? Like if I don't try to manipulate you and control you. You have really no reason to be here with us, right? And so I, I, I want to try to keep keep everyone here. And so this is, you know, it's like telling a kid a, a scary bedtime story because you want them to stay in bed or, you know, the lies that they say, oh, well, if you don't do this, this is going to happen to scare you into doing exactly what I want you to do because there, I really have no control over you. And this is the only way that I can control you and make you participate and because my fear of being alone and my fear of not being a part of something bigger, if you walk out the door and say, you know, you're not for me. And how, how do I force you to participate in these activities and be around these people? And I definitely have told my my mom this, too, as well, because she's like, I'm here to keep the family together. And I was like, sometimes the family needs to get the fuck away from each other. Period. <laughs> because we hurt each other. We're damaging people and we're all traumatized. And I need to go hang out with Terry because, <laughs> you know, I said that's why that's another reason why people get married, right? They go to create a new thing. Mm -hmm. You go get, you, you, 
you're born into a family, but now you have to go build a new family here. And now you have a choice. You know, I, ca I came in on the Erica fleet and I got my boot camp training. I'm out of boot camp. Let me out into the world now and let me go because <laughs> I, I got some things to do about teaching people how not to be like this, you know? <laughs> like, uh, I can, and it's so funny how I, I could probably meet someone who's like my sister, but she's not my sister. So I don't have the trauma that I have with my sister, but I can actually have more compassion for this person because there's no personal pain between us. But I, I've been to the training grounds and I see how you are and I see where it's coming from and now I can help you. But I don't want to therapize my sister either. I don't want to be the one that does that for her. I don't, And I think that too in relationships, like I never wanted to date someone who was like a guru of some sort and be like this forever student inside my home. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to subject anybody else. Your volume is off, Amber. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I the, the thought. Have you thought about that? Like, I don't want. I don't want to be like somebody who's like. Did you do your meditation this morning? Well, and rolling their eyes at me, like you didn't do your meditation. If they're there, if they're in that space, I think you know, <laughs> then, then they'll be more inclined to be able to hold space for you and not. Yeah. Yeah, judge. Yeah, that. like you know, you really, if you choose you that, you can move right. Come on, let's get it. You know, like, I never wanted to be like, ugh. Uh, how do you say when someone is watching you, they're critical of you or they're um over analyzing? Judging. Yeah, they're analyzing your every move. And their analyzing makes you feel like they're judging you. Yeah, I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be like, so therefore, why do I want to go, yeah, why do I, I don't want to do it to somebody else. I know I can be pretty critical myself, too. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Life That's is tough. I, I tend to, because being a Virgo, I would, you know, on details, I would be, I used to be <laughs> judged my friends, like, why, this is the perfect way to do it, but you want to do it this way. Anyways. So now I'm like, okay, that nice you know, I chose to do that. That that's an interesting way. I'm observant of that detail, but that's where they are in that moment, and that's how they they they. Yeah, work I don't them. want to be scrutinized. I want to be loved, not scrutinized. Yeah, and that's fine. I was like, oh, you did that way. That's cool. And not that's that's the Libra part. Like, okay, I'm just I'm. <laughs> Yeah. I want to be treated in balance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I figured out myself. I figured out by myself. No. I don't know how to ask for help. Go out, come back in. Amber, go out, come back in. Telegram. Well, we, we, we did a whole great show. We talked to Amber, but I was. <laughs> Y'all got the wrong people. We be on here all day, y'all. Yo, this is like <laughs> lunch break. Here. So it's like it's like we yeah, we've been on for two hours now. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Yep. Finally. Yeah. There you go. I thought I was like <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I have a microphone right here. And uh, I just like using it because it's very clear. And mm -hmm. compared to my laptop, and um, it wouldn't find it anyway. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, like put a train into all that conversation. <laughs> but all oh, good. I'm so glad I got to hop on here. See you guys. Yeah. Did you want to say something about all of that, or? Oh, I just I had so many things come up. Um. One thing that I have noticed recently, you talked about your cousins and stuff and um, and leaving town. So I left my hometown because I was like, I'm not going to get anywhere in fucking life if I stay here. So I left. And a lot of that meant like, like not, I guess the way I can see it now is I didn't make space for like my family or anything like, and they grew up a little bit harder than what I did. Um, so, I don't know. 
there was kind of, I, I think there was some guilt there. Like I left them behind, but that's, <laughs> I didn't leave them behind. But now what I'm seeing is recently, like one of my cousins who used to be a drug addict, now he's clean and he's meditating every day. And he's talking about parenting on Facebook. I'm like, what? Like, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. And then another one, um, just the way they're talking, they're talking all positively. And then my uncle, her dad goes in and is like, that's a load of bullshit. And I'm like, <laughs> literally that is what has been blocking their light this whole time. And I just, I really see them. Uh, it's just like a connector piece of like, you know, we're cousins for a reason. And, um, I'm just really happy to see my, I'm the oldest cousin out of everyone. That may be the responsibility thing, the guilt, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead. First. Well, you left first, right? Yeah. And you let every one of them know it's okay to leave. It's okay to not conform. It's okay. Save yourself. That's what you did because you opened the door to be like, what it oh, guess what? She left. Mm -hmm. She's different. It's okay to be different. You made it okay to be different. Because I know a lot of families are really close and they maybe be positive or what. I don't know what most families are. I don't want to say that they're positive or negative. But I left There's and I'm good. <laughs> you left and when you get to, when you leave and you get to go free yourself, you're literally being an example for others that they don't have to participate in the same, you know, you don't have to be tied to this family if so it doesn't. Unaware of that. So unaware of that. Wow. You, you, opened, yeah. you opened the door. Cause they got a couple of them, including my uncle, they live in Indianapolis, which is an hour and a half from our hometown, which is a big step for them. And it wasn't until a couple years ago that that happened. But a lot of things started changing for them once they left. It's interesting. I don't talk to him much. It's just really like liking a post on Facebook and stuff like that. But I'm hoping it'll grow in the future when they kind of are ready. Yeah. Here's a funny idea. Huh? Here's a funny, here's a funny idea. On the Truman Show, we only know about Truman. What if there was more than one human on that show? Hmm. What do you mean? He, from his perspective and from our perspective, we're watching the movie and the show is the Truman Show. So he's the only person being observed who doesn't know he's being observed. What if he's not the only one trapped on that show who doesn't know that they're being observed? Once Truman leaves the show, now what if Karen on the next street, who is also, there's a Karen show going on over here. And now she hears about Truman leaving because there's a door over here on the other side. And now she can follow Truman out of the door. Mm -hmm. In our perspective, in our mind, we think and that's the only person on the show, but we don't really know, right? Because... We don't know behind the scenes of the Truman Show what's really going on. Just this weird thought. Yeah, because I intentionally like posts that are positive, you know. And I've seen a shift in the past few years. Wow, I'm like getting coached right now. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> <laughs> you do some awesome coaching, Erica. It's beautiful. Thank you. This is a sandwich. This is a love sandwich we got going on yeah. in here. <laughs> A love sandwich. Yeah. You well, need, I, you're lighting the way. You're lighting I the way. I do have to get going, though. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. I do yes. have to get going. Yes. And this was Thank great. You for, for joining us. Yeah. Today. I'm so glad I saw the message at the right time. Amber, Carrie, um, Zohan, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Here thank you. <laughs> Cause I feel like some things happened and they kind of moved during this, so oh, I feel like some things moved. Might have caught, we might have caused some solar flares. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Can we get on the phone and talk about a lot of things uh, of this past recent, and then all the come forward? You know, like 
I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's just tell, let us know what time. Mm. Yeah, maybe next week or something. When do you get, when, I know you guys got like your little thing going. Well, do you, we want to stop recording yet? Or? <laughs> oh, I didn't know what we got going. I don't know. I, don't know. I was starting to digress. I didn't want to like. <laughs> we got some fire going on here. We got some yeah, we're going to get on it. I want to stop recording so we can go to the behind the scenes of the Truman Show and get behind the scenes. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. I love it. You be like, Ooh. I, I love that. that. <laughs> I was I was looking at the um the first interview we did with you, and you were um hey Saran, and and you were so cute. Your makeup was all on, and I I was just looking at that. Quantum Healer, Terry Smith, with and we talked about how you did the Akashic journey and stuff like that. So then I kind of thought it would be fun for other people to get a chance to do their free tarot. <laughs> then they could hang out with you because I really enjoy the readings that you do for me. <laughs> The ma look up, Terry. Look up. Yeah, I just I, I was I had to hear you. Oh, oh, maybe that's me. I can't hear. Am I? I, I can't hear him either. Could you hear me? I can yeah. hear you. And oh Terry. wow, my volume was off, but you could still hear me. Yeah, but I, I can't. Oh, and where are you, Jonathan? I don't know. Oh, I know what it is. He's in the car and the volume's really low. Ah. Yeah, he can't hear Zoran. I can That's barely weird. hear you. I know what to do. Oh, so he's going to go back out and come back in. Nice. Yeah, that's that's right. Look at Jonathan's here. I was just saying, oh. I was just, I was just looking at the first video I made with Terry. Yeah. And that's when we we that must have been a different day. One day we interviewed interview well, one day you did a Kashuk reading for me, then one day I interviewed you, and then the next day I said, Come on, Terry, let's have sex. Like <laughs> 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 and we did <laughs> and, and, and we changed my life forever, Erica. <laughs> Terry started doing sex tapes with the women of the stars and and, and talking to you know, Jermaine and and everybody, Dab and was you know with the crazies. Yeah. So then she's just been hanging out ever since. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. I just I'm working. I was taking. I was late uh, because of a client, so uh, I'm having breakfast. And um, I just want to say hello to you guys. <laughs> that I love you all. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. We love you too, Zoran. <laughs> I know. Thank you. And uh, that's it. Uh, I have to go. Uh, I have to get back to work now. <laughs> I just want to say hello to you guys. <laughs> it's been a long time. I'm so glad. You guys, so. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Zoran. I might yeah, see you again in June. June. Doing well. It's been a long time, Jonathan, there. <laughs> it's, it has been a time. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, I've seen every once in a while, and uh, Erica also in the chat, mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't seen you in a while there. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a bit of time. Cheers to all of you guys. Cheers. <laughs> you, I gotta go. Cheers. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Okay. See you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Nice. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, guys. It's no big deal. We were just sitting here talking about. I know you. Yeah. I know you guys are beautiful and awesome and understand. <laughs> I woke up, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is that it's still one o'clock where you 
live where you truly live. So it's not like this is an earlier time for you. Oh my God. I didn't touch anything. (laughs) (laughs) This car is talking to me and I didn't touch anything. Anyways, continue. Command not available. But it's funny because you're still you're on a different time zone, but it's actually still like right on time for you, normal on time. Oh, that's hilarious. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I was going to time. sleep last night. I was going to sleep last night and I mean Fezzik, you know, he I'm not used to that as well. He's keeping me up until like early, so like I'm finding that. Right? That's, oh, that's where my lack of sleep is coming from. Partly is mm. the cat mm. and the cats mm. and the raccoons yeah. and the possums that are outside. And I'm like, who's fighting? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Oh, they're always fighting, huh? <laughs> you um, you got to go to the window, uh, window and just take your power back and say, you guys behave yourself. I need sleep. Yeah. I mean, if you don't let yeah. me sleep, I'm not letting, I'm not feeding you tomorrow. Oh my girl, I don't not want them to bust my window. Not overnight. Then, no, you need to take control and say, <laughs> Mama, Mama, I'm not putting up with you this get rated. BL. I want you an animal uprising at my house. <laughs> the money. Oh, no. no animal uprising at my house. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that's funny. So take your time. I mean, really, now, do you really need to come outside still? You could just sit in the car. <laughs> uh, you already? Yeah, here. I'll be like five minutes. Oh, okay. I'm going to say you're already, already here. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just literally five minutes away from her place, so. Yeah. I'll be there. Oh. And I shall no, no, no. soon. I don't know. I know you're at work and maybe, oh, Lindo popped out again. Mm. But it's yeah. cool that we had a chance to see Zora on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would have, I would have uh, connected with him, but on like for the flight and everything, but I had to, it was, it was crazy. It was, we picked the option to, uh, for me to go and check the bags again. So I had to go pick up my bag when I landed in Montreal and then go check the bag and then go back through security. So I only had, I didn't really have extra time. It was like, yeah. And I did that again in Toronto and I did that. Yeah. It's, it's Me, when I, when I was in, when I was in, is it Montreal? I was there for nine hours. Oh my so word. The over was nine hours. Sheesh. Then yeah, that would that makes total sense. Yeah. To be able to, you know. You you've probably seen about. more of Montreal than I have because I've never been to Montreal. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? you know, it's like, you know, because this is such a big country, everything is so far apart, you don't get a chance yeah. to visit the other big cities, you know? Yeah. My goal is to see Montreal. every Walmart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, you've got to start reaching for higher goals, like you know the sound <laughs> has. I didn't see. Did you, well, did Walmart, you go to a in Germany, Walmart in Germany is really different, y'all. It, it's got like um, yeah. the grocery carts are magnetic, and it goes up on an elevator. And I was like, ha. Ah. And, and it's completely different from America's Walmart. So, interesting. I mean, in Florida, people come to Walmart and they have gigantic suitcases. They'll come buy a gigantic suitcase, and you'll just see all these people walking down the street with giant suitcases coming from Walmart. Like you hate to go there, something regular, and then it's somebody from overseas, and they got like a thousand dollars worth of stuff on the counter. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I, I just want a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just came in here for a Red Bull. That's it. And now mm-hmm. this lady's got 
three thousand dollars <laughs> of perfume or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I guess the clothing here is, I guess, cheaper. Maybe some. And, and you know, the, the sad thing is, is they're probably buying the clothing that was made in their own country. Ouch. Yeah. 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 It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, how are you this morning, Carrie? Me? I am just wonderful. It's uh, spring, first day of officially, first full day of spring. The sun is shining. Wow. The sky is blue. There's no chemtrails in our sky. I don't think so. Let me just check. The sky is gray, Terry. <laughs> unless oh, unless I'm in a different no, place. It was, it, was, it, was blue when I woke up. it was blue when I woke up, Jonathan. <laughs> yes, yes. But the sun is, is still shining. It's the sun it's, still it's, shining. It's, it's, um, but, yeah, so it's been... Um, it's exciting that we're into a new season, so we'll see... How mm -hmm. things, how things will move forward from these days. Oh my goodness! How long is parking there, Terry? If you park in the front, you can park all day. There's no, there's no limit to parking. Okay. Here, you just put on some some Nile flower because I was like, wait a minute, we all got our makeup on, but. I know Terry's got her perfume on, and I didn't put on my perfume. I've got rose oh. Damascus on. Rose oh, Damascus. Smells delicious. I'm gonna. I'll put um, mine on when I get it. So, so Erica, I know that you are have been working with the oils of Egypt, uh, and I have a recipe for Cleopatra's perfume. That she used oh. to use that was intoxicating. Oh yeah, yeah. So I'll share it with you. Okay. So Shall I share it with everyone here? Sure, you can, and then I can send it. Maybe I have what I need to make it, and um, it yes, but you're gonna have to wear. I just hold on. Let me go and grab it. I was gonna say, and hopefully it won't cost a thousand dollars for you to pick it up from the post office. <laughs> 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 I tried to send Karen something and I labeled it. It was one bottle of perfume oil and yeah. I labeled it that it, the value was $10. For her to pick it up in Sweden, it would have been $13 to pick it up. What? Basically, whatever the value is, and I think that's what's happening in Egypt and other places, if I say the value is $100, then you're going to pay 100 I say the value is, oh. I told her that the value was $10, they were going to charge her 13 That's crazy. And it wasn't going to be insured either. Oh my word. So if, if the perfume bottle got lost in transit, then you know, and then it, my shipping price was, I think, twenty six dollars in the first place. So yeah, I'm really hoping that there's some change. That or I'm just gonna say, wait a minute, I'm flying to Sweden so I can give you this bottle of perfume. <laughs> 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 You're like starting to weigh it out. Like, well, I might as well just take a trip to Sweden because I don't. Why? If I give someone a gift for free. Yeah. And they have to pay to get it. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready for the recipe? Oh. I, can't you, I can't give you the exact amounts because you're going to have to you're going to have to spend your time just smelling it and seeing how you want. But usually when you're working with essential oils, the one that's the first is going to have the most uh, uh, the most in it. So it 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 goes down in in um in the amounts. So the first part of the perfume is lotus. Okay, that's easy. Got it. Yeah. The second part is myrrh, and the third part is cardamom. That is so funny that you just said that. Yeah. Interesting. So. You're going to mix. Uh, you're going to mix that, and you're going to see which one. You know, like how you're going to um, 
feel about it. You know, you might want more cardamom in it or, or you know, myrrh has got a, a really, it's going to hold the, it's going to bind the fragrance and it's going to be, it's that middle note that's going to just hold it together. Uh, so lotus is the first smell that you're going to get. And then you'll get, you know, the myrrh is actually, it's more, myrrh is actually more of a base note that holds it together. And the cardamom is a middle note. And so that's going to give you that rounded effect with it. So you'll need to play with how many drops you might like of that and, and stuff. So you can make like perfume. What's your code, Terry? Oh, I, yeah, you have to call from the main from the main uh, phone. At six seven. What? Six. What is the seven number? Four seven. Six seven four seven. Okay. So what's funny is that. There's a movie I just watched like two days ago called I'm Totally Fine. And the lady is has a business partner named Jennifer. It's her best friend for life.